Hello students, welcome to a lecture on comparative account of brain invertebrates part 3. In this lecture, first we will see the basic layout of amniot brain. Amniot include reptiles, birds and mammals. In the reptilian and avian brain, they have narrow elongated brain structure as you can see here with small olfactory lobes. All the amniotes have pallium. Pallium means mantle or cover and subpallium divisions in the telencephalon. Telencephalon is the part of forebrain. The dorsal ventricular ridge is the structure in this pallium which is uniquely found in the non-mammalian amniotes that is it is present only in reptiles and birds as shown here. In birds there is additional area known as wolves adjacent to this dorsal ventricular ridge. The cerebral cortex in amniotes has medial dorsal and lateral divisions. The subpallium is also called basal ganglia is further divided into two main subdivisions the striatum and pallidum. In the case of amniotes cerebellum is larger than amphibians. You can see the outline of reptile and bird brain here and also notice the similarities. The brain in reptiles has olfactory bulb followed by olfactory tract and olfactory lobe. This is the enlarged cerebral hemisphere. Here is the pineal body. This is optic lobe. This is auditory lobe. This portion is cerebellum and this is medulla which extends into the spinal cord. In the forebrain, there is enhancement in the size of cerebrum in reptiles such that the thalamus is no longer visible. The diencephalon comprises of pineal gland and thalamus while telencephalon has the cerebral hemispheres. There is dorsoventricular ridge which is present causing an increase in lateral wall of cerebral hemispheres. In the midbrain, the tectum receives sensory information for visual and auditory stimuli and conveys it to telencephalon. In the hindbrain, medulla oblongata and cerebellum are present. Let us see the brain in apes or birds. It is larger than reptiles, but it is based on same basic plan of forebrain as reptiles. They have larger cerebral hemispheres and a striata. known as corpora striata. There are added neurons in dorsal ventricular ridge known as wolves. They also have modifications for stereoscopic vision. They have small olfactory lobes as you can see here and they have large optic lobes emphasizing on the importance of vision in A's. They also have large cerebellum as shown here and broad medulla and pons are present. Well, is the bird brain really primitive? Let's see. It's all down. Did that hurt? Ow, ow, ow. Can you do a cat? Meow. How about a dog? Can you bark? <coughs> Fly on the spaceship and shoot the lasers? <coughs> Can you do water? How about a knock at the door? Can you help me start the car? <coughs> Einstein, can you help me call the dogs? So after meeting Einstein, we know that parrots, hummingbirds and other songbirds, they possess the rare skill of vocal learning. 
they can memorize sounds and repeat them. Jarvis et al. described studies which demonstrated that these primit so-called primitive regions of bird brains are actually very sophisticated processing regions which are homologous to those in mammals. These regions can carry out sensory processing, motor control and learning just as the mammalian neocortex. Even bird IQ index have been, has been built. It is known that crows and falcons, they are the most intelligent birds followed by hawks, woodpeckers and herons. So after all, the story of thirsty crow was true. Now let us see the brain in mammals. Here, the mammalian brain has been shown for different orders. You can see the brain of platypus here. Rat is here. Then human is here. And it is a cat, a dog, and a cow, followed by a dolphin. So you can see that there are these ridges like structures in all these brains, but some of them are smooth. Let's find out. So this is a cladogram of birds and mammals, which shows the origin of two main advancements in the case of mammals. These two are neocortex, which is found in all the mammals, prototherians, metatherians, and eutherians, while another structure, corpus callosum, is found exclusively in eutherian mammals. This neocortex is part of the cerebral cortex, which is a six-layered structure in mammals. And this neocortex is thought to be responsible for the sensory impulses the voluntary motor activity initiation and transmitting sensory information elsewhere into brain for storage and memory. On the other hand, this corpus callosum is the structure which connects the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So the left and right hemispheres of mammalian brain are heavily interconnected compared to very few such connections in case of birds. So mammals have most developed or advanced brains where cerebral hemisphere act as coordinating center of brain. The brain shows convolutions or folds in the form of gyrus or these rounded structure in plural are known as gyri while these grooves inside they are known as sulcus or sulci in plural the mammalian brain has very small olfactory lobes there is deeply positioned globus pallidus which is a part of basal ganglia the diencephalon and midbrain are completely covered by cerebral hemispheres as you can see here in this sheep brain and platypus brain. Also there is presence of the mammillary bodies. These are rounded paired structures which are part of diencephalon as a part of limbic system. Another important point to note here is corpora quadrigemina. These are four colliculi known as inferior and superior colliculi as shown here which are found on the tectum in the midbrain. These are the reflex centers for vision and hearing and in total they are four which refers to quadri hence the name corpora quadrigemina. Another interesting point to note was that platypus, few rodents and opossums, they have smooth cerebral cortex in contrast to 
the other mammals which have convolutions in the cerebral cortex. There is cerebral aqueduct which is present. It actually connects the third and fourth ventricle in the brain. Mammals also possess a large cerebellum and bone spheruli is also prominent in the hindbrain. The medulla oblongata is a thickened structure and here choroid plexus of third ventricle is also shown. So to summarize, we have seen in the series of video lectures, the brain structures of different class of vertebrates starting from cyclostomes, then cartilaginous fishes, bony fishes, amphibians, reptiles, apes and mammals. As a summary, you can draw this diagram. Thank you for watching.